I'm the guy. No, no, you didn't hear it. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to tell you the story because you'll see this on the internet. People ask, was it ever fun to fly the jet? And I told the story one time in Seattle 20, 25 years ago, and it became, you know, this urban legend or something. It's all true. One day, Walter and I are doing a little training mission around the United States where you take off out of Sacramento, hit a tanker in Idaho, rip on up to Montana, zip across Denver, hang a right turn in Albuquerque, rip out over LA, up to Seattle, back into Sacramento, two hours, 21 minutes. <laughs> called the LA Speed Story. And I, it was just a story about one day it was really cool being, being an SR-71 pilot. Walter and I were doing a training mission around the United States where you just were building up hours and time. And we take off out of Beale, hit a tanker in Idaho, rip on up to uh, Montana, zip across Denver, hang a right turn in Albuquerque, out over Los Angeles, up to Seattle, back into Sacramento, two hours, 21 minutes. And you just do that for, and you do it backwards, and you hit a tank or two. It was just, just to gain crew coordination, get, build your hours. We're on our last training mission. We're over Tucson. I can see downtown LA from Tucson. We're at 89,000 feet. I can see the whole western United States bathed in a warm October and fall glow. I can see the chain of Rocky Mountains from Canada to New Mexico. I can, I can just see the most beautiful picture laid at my feet in this air as smooth as glass. Not a gauge moving in the cockpit. It was perfect. Now I'm thinking, we bad. <laughs> now I feel sorry for Walter because he has to monitor five radios in the back seat, so I flipped the switch up just to listen. and. LA Center is controlling, they control all, when you fly Southwest Air, they're the guys controlling everybody. But we're above controlled airspace. So they, they have us on their scope, but they're not talking to us. Now there's controllers all over the country, Jacksonville Center, Chicago Center, Seattle Center, you know. It's the same guy. They all talk the same. And it's really cool the way they talk, because they make you feel important as a pilot. They don't just say, yeah, okay, here's your thing. They make you feel really cool. So sure enough, this was pre-GPS days. Some Cessna guy has to know his ground speed. Uh, LA Center, Cessna, November Tango Alpha. You got a ground speed readout for us? Now, Center would like to say, who cares? Get off free. <laughs> but no, he'll talk to him like he's John Glenn. Cessna, November Alpha, we show you 90 knots, nine zero knots on the ground. And they do that sing-song, but that's how they talk. And it makes you feel kind of cool. Right after that, a twin bonanza came up to pimp the guy for speed, I guess. And, LA Center, Twin Beach, uh, whatever. You got a ground speed read up for us? And Center likes it. God, it's Friday. Why me? God, please, just get off. But he's going to talk to him like he's Air Force One. Twin Beach, shall we show you 121, two, zero knots on the ground. And right after that, a Navy F-18 out of Lemoore popped up on frequency. And you knew it was a Navy guy because he talked really slick on the radio. Center Dusty 5-2 speed check. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. Dusty 5-2 has a ground speed indicator and that million dollar F-18 cockpit. It's right there in the heads up display. Why is he calling Center to broadcast his speed? <laughs> I get it. We are just the meanest, baddest, fastest military jet in the valley today. We're taking our little Hornet jet over Mount Whitney and ripping across Death Valley. And we want everyone from Fresno to the coast to know what real speed is. And you can almost hear a little, a little glee in the controller's voice like, we have put an end to this. <laughs> Dusty 5-2, we show you 620, 620 knots across the ground. And it was that across the ground. See that little knife like, I hope nobody else has the nerve to get on frequency now. And there wasn't an airliner from Seattle to San Diego that wanted to be next on freak. It's sort of an etiquette thing amongst flyers. And a 12-year-old was reaching for the mic button. <laughs> and I thought, oh, no, wait, Walter's in charge of the radios. I flew single seat all those years, but I'm in the family model now. And I, I went, no, it's the Navy that must die. It must die now. And I, <laughs> and I thought, no, but if I do, I, well, I'll upset Walter, and I want us to be a good crew. And I, at that moment, I heard a click of the mic button in the back seat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Walter and I became a crew at that moment. In his best innocent voice, L.A. Center, Aspen 3-0, have you got a 
grand speed readout for us? <laughs> you could almost hear a collective gasp on Freak, like all oh, the poor fools didn't hear the previous transmissions. Oh, they, they got crushed like a grape. It's, it's just a pilot thing. But Center had to give you that same voice. Aspen 3-0, we show you 1,992 knots. <laughs> Across the ground. <laughs> when I knew I was going to like Walter a lot is when he came back and said, Center, we're showing a little closer to 2,000. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we did not hear another transmission on that frequency <laughs> all the way to the coast. The king of speed lived, the Navy had been flamed, and a crew had been formed. <laughs> For just a moment, it was absolutely fun being the fastest guys on the block. 